one, I believe, is, let me just navigate backwards to our website, uh, Janice Lee and Will Stanier on uh, November 14th. That'll be a great one. Uh, and then we also have Lainey Brown and Sheila Murphy coming up, Brandon Shimoto and Tracy at City, um, Jean Huving and Jamie McCarty, and then James Sherry and Najima. Uh, which will just, uh, I think Najima has a musical accompaniment. So a lot of really great uh, just programming for, for POG this year. We're just thrilled about it. Um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I know that, I think Lisa, we're gonna do some introductions for our readers. So take yeah. it away. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thanks, Cameron. Um, thanks for getting us started and for your help with the flyer, with the Facebook event, and for all your patience dealing with <laughs> me with all that. Um, Thanks to David Weiss for um, getting us organized on Zoom and uh, his eventual help putting the YouTube video together so we can keep sharing this and reach even more people. Um, so I was following Kathleen Dreyer's portrait series about first responders last spring. And I had been introduced to her work by my good friend, black man Clay, Clay Adams. And um, so I was, you know, drawn into her recent work that way. Um, after the really horrific killing of George Floyd, Kathleen started another portrait project, Tucson Black Voices. Uh, she wanted to, in her own words, be proactive in addressing racial injustice in all its forms by providing a forum for people who wanted to share their experiences. And she wanted to give viewers an opportunity to listen and reflect and actively be allies. Um, we're gonna be putting a link, I think we may already have maybe in the chat to that portrait project. And um, I wonder if you wanna say anything more about that project, Kathleen, before we get started with our readers. Let's see if we can unmute. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, you summarized it very well. Um, and so I, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here. I'm so grateful for all these beautiful artists that have participated in the series. To date, I have taken the portraits of approximately 60, 65 people for the series. So it, it is continuing and evolutionary. I've started a third series. Um, so it's, it's a, a time where we're all just trying to do our work, right? We're all trying to make the world a better place right now, you know, in our respective ways through our words, through our images, through our art. Great. Um, I, you know, in exploring that portrait project um, was just taken by how many people expressed themselves with poetry or very poetic statements. And so that got me thinking, well, this, poetry organization that I'm involved with, it would be great to have a reading with some of these poets. And the people on the board were very interested. And so I approached Kathleen about her help kind of getting the word to folks and seeing who was interested. And, and she was very helpful with that. And we heard back from four people and um, have a really strong slate of readers here tonight. Um, I wanted to, so thank you, Kathleen, for your help in contacting people. Um, I know there's probably some poets that got involved after I really picked up the ball and, and ran with it. Um, so I would just encourage people to go to that portrait project on Facebook and, um, you know, avail yourself of every thing that's there, all the voices and, and things that people have shared about their experiences. Um, I'd like to dedicate this reading to my treasured friend, Clay Adams. 
known to his many fans and followers as Black Man Clay. Um, he, yeah, he's um, a musician, uh, a well-known street performer in this town and um, founder uh, of the band um, One Heartbeat. And he's been inducted into the Tucson Musicians Hall of Fame. And um, he is someone who you can find also on the Portrait Project and read his statement. And um, two of his daughters are working with us. Oh, are we gonna see Clay? Hey, Clay, <laughs> so glad to see that face. Thanks for joining us, Clay and Anne. What a honor to have you with us. Um, so I encourage you to read his statement. If you don't know Clay and his philosophy and his music, that'll be a good introduction. All right, thanks for joining us. Ah, I've got your one heartbeat. Black man Clay designed pendant on here today. So- Hi everybody. <laughs> hey. Dedicate one this heartbeat. One heartbeat. Black man Clay. Black man yeah. Clay. <laughs> <laughs> In the house, man, all respect. <laughs> Good to hear you. 40 years. I'm so thrilled you're here. Beautiful, so, loving man. Yes. Say bye bye. Tripping through the universe. <laughs> bye bye. That's what we're doing here tonight. We are tripping yeah. through the universe. <laughs> all, all right. right. Bye -bye. Good work. <laughs> All right, so with that, let me introduce Ava Adams. She is recorded, previously recorded, and we're gonna share her, her poem, um, her recorded poem. And um, you'll see that she is wise beyond her years. And I thank her for her willingness to share her very personal and heartfelt piece with us tonight. Um, Throughout her reading and this entire reading, you should be able to access the chat feature. If there's anything you want to say in response, you know, any positive feedback for our poets is welcome. And hopefully, we'll have some Q and A time when we're done. So, David. All right, do you got that? Well, um, we're joined today by Ava Adams. Thanks, Ava, for being willing to share the really powerful personal statement that you wrote and shared as part of the Tucson Black Voices Portrait Project with Kathleen Dreyer. I reread it today. And boy, I thought this is gonna be powerful to hear read out loud by you. Um, and, you know, I, I really love the new pieces of family history that you shared in that, that were new to me. So um, welcome, Ava. Mm, thank you, Lisa. Um, I've known Lisa for some time through my father. And um, I'm grateful to have this opportunity. This piece was a lot for me to get out. Um, yeah. it, um, I, I'm even considering omitting just two of the lines. I'm not sure who's going to be reading this. I don't know. You probably know the lines that I'm speaking of. Um, well, I think you should feel free okay. to read it unedited, but you've got your own comfort level too. Okay, that's great. So. Um, yeah, I, I agonized a lot over those two lines. Um, it just brought up a lot for me. So, um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and, and share it as is. <sighs> I hold the bloodline of America's racial divide in my veins. My DNA reflects the trauma 
of my indigenous and black ancestors woven simultaneously with the trauma of my white ancestors who were bred to eliminate and enslave them. When we look at the timeline of our history, it was just yesterday that my great grandfather was a slave. It was just yesterday that my dad was 18 by the time his school was desegregated. It was just yesterday that he picked cotton from the time he could walk and as a teenager lived in the maid's quarters of a white general's house. The imposed separateness of black Americans from the white norm has pervaded our reality for centuries. Following are some of the divisive voices around race I have observed firsthand or had directed to me in my modern life. White voices. You can't be windy from Peter Pan. There's no such thing as a black windy. She's the prettiest black girl I've ever seen. Slutty nigger. Black babies are so cute, I want one. Keep it white. Purple pussy. You're the first black girl I've ever kissed. I don't see color. See my color. See my black family. Do not look away. Do not ignore their story. Do not ignore mine. Black voices. You don't count. You pass for white. You don't know who you are. You need to choose. Are you with us? Are you with them? I choose me. All voices. What are you? Human. Voices separate us or connect us. Passed down from generations, they play a role in the development of our reality. At times, I feel this dichotomy within me as an inner war that plays out through anxiety, depression, low self-worth, and confusion of my place in the world. Now, it is a resounding call to rise as an alchemical bridge of reconciliation and transmutation of the abuses and movement beyond the races. The fabrication of racial division and the laws implemented to enforce it have been a tool used on humanity since the creation of our society for the benefit of select powers. Justice for one is justice for all. This time is for the great awakening and reclamation of ourselves and our reconnection to each other. All humans, all life, we are stronger together and we will rise together. Thank you. I know, such a powerful piece. We're honored to be your audience, Eva. Um, so next we have Kendall Foster. Kendall shared a poem for his personal statement that was written by Prince EA. I don't know, am I pronouncing that? Right, I haven't heard him live for a while. Along with sharing this poem, he hopes it's gonna open up a dialogue. So again, I would encourage folks to go to his portrait and statement on Tucson Black Voices Portrait Project and share comments, questions. Um, 
because he's open and interested in dialoguing. So, um, and hopefully we'll have time for some Q&A when we're all wrapped up here too. So, Kendall. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, I'd highly encourage any, everyone to look out and look up Prince EA on YouTube. I think he has a lot of great messages. I just wanted to read an excerpt from one of his that really hit me when Kathleen approached me for her series uh, for the uh, Black Lives Matter photography as well. So without further ado, I am not black. I mean, that's what the world calls me, but it's not me. I didn't come out of my mother's womb saying, hey, everybody, I'm black. No, I was taught to be black. And you were taught to call me that, along with whatever you call yourself. It's just a label. See, from birth, the world force feeds us labels. And eventually we all swallow them. We digest them, we accept them, never ever doubting them. But there's one problem. Labels are not you, labels are not me. But who we truly are is not skin deep. See, when I drive my car, no one would ever confuse my car for me. When I drive my body, why do you confuse me for my body? It's my body. You get it? Not me. Let me break it down. See, our bodies are just cars that we operate and drive around. The dealership will call society, decide to label mine the black edition, yours the Irish or white edition. And with no money down, 0% APR, no test drive. We are forced to own these cars for the rest of our lives. Forgive me, but I fail to see the logic or pride in defining myself or judging another by the cars that we drive. Because who we truly are is found on the inside. Listen, I'm not here to tell you how science has concluded that genetically we're all mixed and race is in the human species doesn't exist or how every historian knows that race was invented in the 15th century to divide people from each other and it's worked perfectly. No, I'm not here to lecture. I just wanna ask you one question. Who would you be if the world never gave you a label, never gave you a box to check? Would you be white, black, Mexican, Asian, Native American, Middle Eastern, Indian? No, you'd be one. We'd be together, no longer living in error. I'm gonna end right there because I can't, uh, I, I really want everybody to go on and follow Prince EA. He has so many great videos, so many great poems, and I wanna leave it kind of on a cliffhanger because um, the message that he drives home is togetherness, just as the other poet had written. Thanks so much, Kendall. Um, I think we were gonna put the link in the chat and I know he's very easily searchable on YouTube, Prince, and then cap space, capital E, capital A. Um, yeah, he's he's got great thoughts to share. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Yeah, um, our next reader, is Amber Lee Tarasas. Am I saying that last name right? Tarasas? It's pronounced Terrasas, but that's only if you want to have some fun with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I do. It's like Terrasas. <laughs> Tarasas. Mm -hmm. She's coming to us from Canada, but like her sister Ava Adams, she grew up in Tucson, and so that informs her experience. What she's sharing tonight. Um, she told me she's written three short poems. So I'm looking forward to hearing those. Well, Amber. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, Kathleen. And thank you, everyone, for joining and sharing your wonderful energy. I can, uh, it just feels beautiful. I can feel the, um, desire for healing and unity among everybody. I was going to do three, but then I timed myself and I want to just do two to make sure I stay within the time. 
I have been writing poetry since I was a child. I come from a big family of writers, orators, screenwriters, songwriters, shamans, and performers. Poetry has really helped me make sense of my own journey in this very interesting, chaotic, and beautiful time we all live in. This uh, first poem I wrote as um, a dedication for the youth, the children, the babies being born today and generations to come. I always wanted encouragement as I traverse this fantastic era. And now I hope I can be a beacon of encouragement and light and love just as my father and mother have been for myself and for many, I hope to carry that. So this poem is called New Ninjas. I have been watching sideways and long ways, open eyed and delighted observing the children of today, the children of now. Our current dualistic minds have tried to categorize the special energies of the new babes, indigo, rainbow, crystal child. You are all of these and none. You hold the light of life in your eyes. No need for so many words since you were born already knowing, already feeling, already suited and armored up for this earthly event, this cataclysmic, apocalyptic, prophetic, and divine time. You bringers of the new age, high empaths, compassionate, bright beings that you are, the time has come to dance in the dark, to shine your light, and de-hypnotize your minds. Children, oh beautiful children, the masters and the controllers of the old age will certainly keep you on your toes through distraction, illusion, distortion, and traumatic separation from your own people, from your own Dare I say they may even keep you in masks, confusing and binding, constricting, crazy making age old cultures. No matter, children, you sport your masks like the ninjas you are, turned in every situation into creation and art. Use the tools of this world, whip up whimsy with all its collapsing parts. You come to welcome the new dawn, dance and be merry, lead with light and live in your heart. Oh children, Zen masters of all ages and shamans, now new ninjas today, for you are the holders, the alchemizers and the beers of the new way. Okay. So now be uh, reading the second one and uh, the second poem I wrote one month ago, I wrote it to express a finalization stage of my own intense spiritual journey, which began, began almost four years ago as I faced life-threatening addiction and I needed to get very creative in order to heal. I did not realize at that time that I would be embarking on a journey of ego integration, a journey back to my true self. This poem is all embodied. My body has been a playground, a carnival of sorts, complete with, dare I say, a sideshow of freaks, outcasts, and monstrosities. My body is where, for generations, I have donned different masks, conjured diverse characters, and conspired with all the rest to fool myself to act out all these colorful comedies and dreadful dramas of life. My body is where I have experienced war, a battleground for my devotions, a territory for my indulgences, a nation for my offspring, built on not too solid structures of idealism and purpose. My body is where piety has been practiced, where my flesh and your flesh have been restricted lest we be compared to the lowly beasts and whipped into bloody complicity. 
My body is where philosophies have been born, mental games with maniacal masks, excuses for illicit behaviors and where the fervor of meaning and realism have been practiced. But now, after all that history, my body is ready for more and has begun spinning silk, ribbons of ripe experience for its material chrysalis, for its transformation beyond time. The history of my kindred ancestors, of my species, the trauma and bloodshed and the insurmountable love all woven into my DNA is now ready to metamorphose and become what it was designed to be, an emblem, an expression, an icon of delicious divinity. Now the ego masks are dissolving, the battles are diminishing, and the illusory ideas of mind are dying. Each cell of my beautiful body is filling with the nectar of life, with the essence of the beloved divine who has whispered sweetly in my ear since I was young my body this wonderful and wild landscape of life has seen and experienced the madness and the glory of so many generations living and dancing in the dark now i become reunited cell by cell beat by magnificent heart beat with this grand gift that is my body thank you All right, thanks for taking us on those journeys. That was wonderful. Um, and it, Amber has another poem that's on the Tucson Black Voices Portrait Project site that um, you should check out too. It's a powerful poem that's there for more of Amber. Thank you. Um, so our last, but definitely not least reader, General Jafari is gonna share something. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if it's a poem or a statement. And then he wants to share a bit of his music. Um, he started his life in Ivory Coast, um, Africa, um, lives in, performs in Tucson now. And I know he had a recent gig at Monterey Court that I was wishing I could get to. So I'm kind of keeping an eye out for the next time I can see him perform live. Um, so uh, you'll have to tell us at some point how to follow you and your wonderful music. There are lots of YouTube videos and recordings. So we'll have to find out more about that. Welcome General. Let's see, we gotta get you unmuted too. Okay, yep. can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, uh, everyone. I'm grateful to be here tonight. And uh, I hope I can use this microphone because I will finish my speech with singing. I hope everyone can hear me right. And uh, so, uh, okay, and it is a statement I did on to some uh, black voice. Uh, thank you, Catherine Driver, for giving me that opportunity. Okay, so let's go for the speech. I know there are a lot of things going on in this world. But my thoughts about this country are the same. Liberty, freedom, and everyone has the same right. I came here five years ago from Ivory Coast, West Africa, as an immigrant. We came as a musician. We were so happy to be invited as a band to share our 
culture with the rest of the world. We always dream about United States because of the effort we saw around the world, the land of justice and liberty. It is the perfect place to live and be free. We want our motherland, Africa, to have the same vision. Everyone is equal. I decide to stay here in the United States because people open their heart to me. I feel like I left home to come home. I see white and black people as my brothers and sisters. I don't feel fear. I respect the law and I'm happy to be here. My friend and journalist from Africa asked me if I'm, feel, I'm feeling safe because of everything going on. I told them that I haven't experienced any injustice here in Tucson. A couple months ago, I wrote a song about God is love. In it, I sing about how we shouldn't see each other by our skin color, but rather by we are all human beings. We are a perfect being that God made. We have the opportunity to change this world, come together as a one human race, because we want peace, right? This world is beautiful because there are different color, different culture, different spirit. All this diversity present the beauty of this world. We are like the sky. America, for me, it is the head of liberty and freedom because this country went through a lot to get to this level. It is true, people come from different sides, reason and perspective. Some leaders like Abraham Lincoln have done a lot advice, freedom for everyone. Can we learn from our past? Can we? Can we learn from our mistake and choose to be in peace with each other? This action will result in true liberty and true freedom. I hope you enjoy my songs, Jai's Love. One God, one people, one destiny, we all are sin. Right the fire, Jai is love, my God is love, Celestia is love. Jai is love, I want his love, my God is love. You can't look at people as a color. You cannot look at people as a religion, no matter what. One human race, no matter what. One human being, Rastafa. Jai is love, Selassie is love. 
My God is love. Jai is love. I am man love. Say Lassia is love. You can't look at me as a black. You cannot look at her as a white. No matter what, stop look at him as a Christian. No matter what, stop look at her as a Muslim. In judge alone, you must love one another. Jai is love, Selassie is love, my God is love. Oneka munekira, ibe njugu ya late, neka munekaira, abe neko sauru ya late, makala ye, makala kira ye, makala ye, makala kira ye. Makala ye, makala kira ye, makala ye, makala kira ye. Oh, masa, mara jugo be ne nyani na te, wasta farai, one people, one destiny. General Chefari, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can find my music on YouTube. I have my web website also, General Chefari, and I'm blessed to be part of this group. It is a positive group, and I'm happy. Give thanks. Thank you so much for bringing that here to our audience. That was wonderful. Um, so we know how to follow you. Um, I guess what I'd like to do is open it up to audience for comments, questions for any of the readers tonight. I don't know exactly how to manage that, but can we <laughs> unmute and look for hands or people can speak up? I just, I am Joan, I'm calling in from, from Canada, Vancouver. And uh, I just, I'm, yeah, so touched and moved by everything I, I heard here. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate to be the aunt of, Amber and Ava, and uh, I, I so you know seeing play on here was was amazing too, and uh, and just hearing the voices, you know, like it's uh, and the, the 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 final song, I think it just pulled it all together, you know. Um, so I I just I just feel very moved. I don't really know what to say. I just the emotion is strong. So thank you all. I'm glad I got here. Yeah, I'm glad you did too. I have a comment. Amber. Yeah, it's just, it feels so, I just, the energy of growing up in Tucson, which has been a really unique place of a lot of blending. Like, you know, so we are right on the border. We have a lot of mixed races. We have, it's just been such a fantastic cosmic place to grow up. And it, it's beautiful to see this now, um, like these energies that I'm feeling are really kind of have a theme here. You know, everybody, it's like this theme of going beyond the constrictions that we've all been living with for a lot of generations. Um, and we're just ready to, to see ourselves for that inner light, you know, and it, it's very confirming and validating to to see this so much, you know, what came out of Tucson and what's going on here in Vancouver as well. So thank you everybody for this beautiful, like just unifying, validating energy. Yeah, thanks for sharing it. There was really a strong spiritual 
theme that ran through, mm-hmm. you know, when I first started reading people's work and, and learning more about each reader, I was like, wow, we really have this <laughs> amazing group. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I've, I heard several times, you know, the word unity mm-hmm. and the word one, and I just appreciate all of you for keeping that because I know it's it, it's it's easier to say it than to have it be true. Uh, I mean, I mean, in a way, it is true no matter what we do. But I also know that some people I've known in Tucson, whether um, people of color or gay or trans, haven't always had the experience the general has had of not experiencing any hate and but i think if if more of people are going to have that experience it requires this positive attitude that you have all expressed tonight which i just want to applaud you yeah and i would yeah i would just like to say um uh, i was so honored and touched when uh, kathleen approached you know, my family members, my my t- my daughters, my son, my husband, um, when all this was happening back in June and things were, the the feelings were running really high, um, Lives Matter, and uh, Kathleen wanted to give, allow, you know, voice to be given and expression to be given um, and allow people to come forward and make statements. And I think it was a very important and valuable exercise. And I know that my daughters were uh, very honored to be a part of it, uh, as was my son and, and Clay. And um, just hearing again these, this, these poems tonight and these words is uh, very moving. And um, thank you, thank you for bringing this to us, Kathleen and Lisa tonight and all of you artists and poets. Um, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I think it's going to reach further than this, too. I think it's going to have tendrils that that go out. Kendall, you wanted to hop in? Yeah, I just had to speak on, I had to piggyback on that with Kathleen's uh, initiative. She really was kind of the torchbearer on this whole project and obviously spilled over to you, Lisa, as well. Yet uh, her sharing her passions and her gift of photography, I thought that was awesome. And it was a great idea when I heard her say, hey, I just want to take some photos. You don't have to say anything. I just want your photo. I want your image. Um, Again, thank you, Kathleen. That was awesome. And it got such a buzz going around. And it started so much more conversations. And I invited a handful of people to uh, all individually, you know, uh, COVID, Protocols followed. We all walked around the park and we talked about a lot of the challenges with uh, Black Lives Matter and and all these isms that we're having to face. So again, Kathleen, thank you. Uh, And Lisa, thank you for posting this too as well. So, Yeah, I I echo that. Kathleen, does this continue to be an ongoing project? Yes, yes, it is. I'm, I'm, simultaneously doing three portrait series right now and and finding my way into rolling them you know uh interweaving them so mm-hmm. so i'm um a third series that i'm doing right now is actually stemmed from the um gentle but firm confrontation from a black friend who said you know, we've been speaking about our worth for hundreds of years. And it's time for the white people to look at themselves in the mirror and express what they're learning and what they're observing. And and so I'm I'm working on that series also. And so it's it's been um uh I I've said this to many people, I'm I'm like a rudderless boat. I'm just following, um, you know, the the tide of 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 where all of these various projects are leading, series are leading, and hope that somehow it's making a difference. So. 
Yeah. I, I admire that. So I don't know if we need to unmute. Yeah. People that we don't have a picture for so that we know they can speak up and I think they're that. I think they're hearing us. Yeah. And they, and they can unmute themselves now, right, David? Yeah, I don't think we can unmute okay. them. They have to unmute themselves. Okay. So you can unmute yourself and speak up if you want to be a part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. The feedback. I would just like to uh, say thank you very much to uh, Charles Alexander and his uh, class on poetry. It has been a wonderful experience, and that's how I knew about this evening, and thanks to you, because we're in the same class. Anyway, I especially appreciated Amber's uh, poem about the children. Mm. And, uh, too often, we may not pay attention to how important they are in our world. And just this whole experience this evening has given me different views of my own body when I think about it driving around my car, mm -hmm. also uh, being a chrysalis, and it's just the ideas that are so powerful along with all of the things that we've heard tonight, the poetry, the music, and thank you for getting us organized and uh, making it available for all of us. Yeah, there was some great imagery in those poems, Amber, for sure. There's thank you very images. much. <laughs> Yeah, in my, go ahead. I was just saying to quote Amber back to you. I hope this evening proves cataclysmic, apocalyptic, and prophetic. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, we are amazing souls here, guys. We are doing some amazing work. My dad taught me that my whole life, and um, you know, he's always been saying the children are the teachers, and and it's true. And you know, as we all go on our own journeys to figure out our own childhoods and heal. It's just amazing. But yeah, I've been, um, I feel like now I'm at this point where I'm like really ready to start, uh, to start really thinking about the new generations coming, but also honoring the generations like, um, you know, people born in the sixties and then my father's age, we're, we're all kind of intermingling right now. Mm -hmm. And it's very beautiful to see this, you know. So it's been so lovely. I'm so happy I got to participate in this evening, everybody. I, I want to give another shout out to Black Man Clay. Um, you know, it's, I've been thinking, Amber, as you were just speaking, the full circle. You know, one of the very first, um, the very first time I photographed your dad, was in 2006, it was like um, a World Refugee Day at the Fox Theater. And I had met Eric Heithouse. I was just a, a really green beginning photographer. And, um, you know, I, I'm reflecting with a, a great deal of sweetness about this night would not be happening if that night 14 years ago didn't happen. Your dad is the key and the thread to so many of us in this room right now. Clay, I love you. Black man Clay, I love you with my whole heart. And I, I have respect for into infinite eternity one love you have taught us about love over and over again you've had one message and that has been love and i've been really trying to listen to that for years and years and practice it and the reflection of it in your children is it's there it's it's i'm i'm so grateful to you and to have met you some 14, 15 years ago through Eric Heithouse at the Fox Theater. That was a long time ago. You got down on the ground that night. You were down, you went all the way down on the ground singing your song about love. 
and the importance of of um sorry that's uh, my cats reacting to <laughs> cats outside yeah. something my apologies i'm like whoa um well, thank you clay i'm very grateful to you and yeah. to your friends mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. love and communication yeah. yeah all i can do is over and over again sing about the same thing <laughs> Preach. Well, all oh, one heartbeat. Sharing information of generations past. Yeah. Each new cycle gains knowledge from the light. So keep on spreading one message that we are with the earth forever and ever. We are all <clears throat> one heartbeat. One heartbeat. Enough said. I'm sad, yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your love and friendship. For bringing us all together here. Thank you very much. Keep on keeping on. There is absolutely no doubt that we're all in this room because of Black Man Clay. <laughs> we would not be here if it was not for Black Man Clay. <laughs> that, that's... That's the root of this tree. I'm honored that you should put out those words. I'm always searching for new words. Without new words, it's the same word. <laughs> Agape love to you. Anyone else want to join in <laughs> before we? Yes. Hi, I, I just wanted to say that this, this evening was such a, a healing balm for me. And I just want to really thank you all so much. I, I feel like there's been just so much chaos and so much anger and so much frustration and so much division. And this, I didn't know what to expect onto this. And, and I'm, my heart is so full and so touched. So I, I just am eternally grateful to the poets tonight and for everyone who put this on. Thank you so very much for offering this to us. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, beautiful, beautiful words, beautiful poetry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I'll resume my MC duties for a moment here. Yeah, and thank you for guiding us through this kind of, we usually do a question and answer at the end of our readings uh, in, in traditional times. That's kind of how it went. But um, yeah, I, I think ending on that message is as good as, as, good as any. Uh, yeah, and just want to thank you all once again for, for coming tonight. And we can certainly leave this room open if others want to linger around and just kind of chat for a little while we'd like to do that um but yeah thank you everyone once again one maybe one more round of applause for our writers yay <laughs> may the best of love continue on <laughs>